guys, my name is Alex Barham. This is going to be your river guide to Mill Creek, which is located in Lowville. That's right, Lowville, not Lowville, New York. This is for many people their intro, first time doing tug hill creaking or micro creaking. That means that the river is gonna be flashy. It's usually running in the spring or after a really strong set of rains in the fall. You're always worried in the back of your mind about what if a tree fell in here, there's no breaks, no real eddies, and it's just spicy. Starting out, you're going to go to the takeout. On your way up, you wanna have a quick look at the town drop, which is located near the Stewart's gas station. From there, you just go north on 12, take the very first right, and then at a big white apartment building, the drop's gonna be right behind it. If that all looks good, keep going up. Go to the Route 12 bridge, pull over, and look over both sides. This is gonna be the most technical stretch of the whole thing. If you don't like this, just stop. Once you're at the put-in, look at the levels again. I have absolutely, on the way up, lost water in this creek. At the lower end, it can, it can just happen. So, if it looks runnable, you're in good shape. If that hole above the bridge looks munchy, you probably miscalculated and it's going to be huge in there. Good little gauge before you go. First rapid is gonna be a shoot. You're gonna go right to left to right again. And the real thing here is just pay attention for trees. It gets really tight. If there's gonna be a tree in it, you'll probably see it from the top. But this now will be the entrance to a long kind of flat area as you work your way to the gradient in the creek. Be warned in this upper section, there are a lot of high wind blowdowns and I've even come across barbed wire strands uh, for cattle grazing in here. So always, always on the tug hill, have to have your head on a swivel. Be ready for the unexpected. Things will suddenly start to pick up. You'll start to see little horizon lines. Just stay center. Usually everything sort of just buffs out. Unless you're there at serious water, there aren't gonna be any retentive holes. The bigger concern is just gonna be hard landings, but nothing's above six feet. So just, if you think you're gonna hit hard, lean forward, take the impact, and save your back. After the first few rapids, you're going to see a little waterfall entering on the left. You want to go all the way to the bottom of that waterfall and enter this one on the left side, working your way back towards center after the first drop. This is going to drop you down into a wide open space. On the back side of this, you usually will see more trees as you go into a boulder garden. From here, all the drops are going to start getting bigger, and this has been described as just the most smiles per mile that you can make in whitewater low consequence, everything is just super fun. For the most part, go center, stay center, everything is gonna be gravy. Eventually, all of the flow is gonna go all the way to the right side after one of the biggest slides. Right here, you're gonna see this crazy crashing Hawaii Five O wave that goes right to left. Throw your shoulders into it, don't lean back, or you'll take a whipper. This style will continue for a while until you suddenly start to open up out of the trees and then you're gonna be at last chance. Last chance is the last really noticeable slide before you go into that Route 12 bridge section. Start on the right, work your way to the center, and then catch the eddy directly below on the right. If this has been sketchy to you, hop out, go to the road, call it a day. Still feeling good? Keep going down. There's going to be a significant amount of boogie water, a little white house up on the right, and then all of a sudden you're gonna be forced all the way to the right and then left. The crux move of the bridge drop is all the way at the beginning. You need to punch really hard over a deep curler that's right in front of you, get all the way to the far wall as the river makes a 90 degree right turn in front of you, and then stay up there and wait for a boof. If you chicken out and don't go screaming like you're gonna hit that far wall as it S turns around you, you're gonna go into a really nasty slot and bad things tend to happen in there. So stay high, commit to the line, everything will be fine. Soon as you land, 
look for a huge eddy on the right, carve hard in there, and you may want to set up safety to make sure no one washes into the next rapid. The next rapid hooks hard left over two drops. You want to start center, riding hard left, and charge into that corner. Be aware of big holes at higher water and a nasty piton rock at lower water. So bring speed in, look over the horizon line, and smash your way through. Right below, there is a super undercut wall right where you think you want to relax. So stay tuned up. Do not touch the right side wall. It will suck you right under. And keep going all the way out into the boogie water. These boogie rapids continue for about a mile or so before you start to get into town. You'll know you're getting into town because all the houses will get closer to closer and there'll be a sharp left turn where another creek comes in on your right. Right in front of you will be an enormous bridge and you'll see all of the current goes over a horizon line immediately under the bridge. Work your way all the way to the right corner of the dam where you'll see a broken kind of corner slot this is a left boof, and you want to make really sure that you hit it. Otherwise, you could get absolutely rocked in this dam. Soon as you land, you are going to be looking for a big eddy on the right. You need to hit it relatively low. If you cheat and try and come in high, you will ground out your bow, and now you're going backwards into the town drop. Really good idea to scout the town drop, especially at lower water. It's not uncommon for people to not be able to make the ferry out to the center. And the right side has a really nasty rock shelf that if you miss your boof or even just don't get out on your boof, you could either piton or stern hit really hard. The left side has a pretty significant siphon against the wall. So it's incredibly important that you stay dead center. All that said, this is one of the sweetest booths around. It's a false double drop lip. So you're going to take a quick stroke and then another quick stroke and just bounce off that shelf, pull your knees up as hard as you can and soar. Catch the eddy on the right side underneath the building and make sure that your group comes out safe. Immediately in the back side of this pool, you go into a little sieve city. Everything in here is blasted concrete, so it's sharp, jagged, and super undercut. Don't touch any of this stuff, just pick the cleanest line you can through. That's pretty much it. Now you're just boogieing through a little canyon, going down to the takeout. Hopefully everything was super clean, and once you know this run, you know it, and it becomes one of your absolute favorites. If you like this, you will love most of the Tug Hill classics. Definitely try to catch Cincinnati Creek and just enjoy the Tug Hill. It's a super special place. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.